Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so we're going to talk about stoichiometry. And stoichiometry is a study of quantitative measurements between the amounts of reactants used and products formed in a chemical reaction. And you, talking about this, we're going to talk about the law of conservation of mass. And don't forget the law of conservation of mass is that matter can neither be created nor destroyed, meaning that we can't create matter out of nothing, we can't destroy matter in, into nothing. So understanding that, we can look at um, balanced chemical equations and get lots of information from them. Let's look at the first thing we can get. We can actually get the names of the compounds and the, the, and the uh, elements and saying that iron reacts with oxygen to form iron 3 oxide, okay? And then we get the balanced chemical equation, meaning we get the chemical symbols and the states of matter. So we say 4 Fe uh, solid plus 3 oxygen gas yields 2 Fe2O3 solid. Um, and what those coefficients actually mean, that 4, 3, and 2, is that for every 4 atoms of iron uh, that react with 3 molecules of O2, you get four formula, sorry, two formula units of Fe2O3. Okay, great. And going a bit step further, uh, we can change those into moles. These are actually molar relationships, meaning that if we have four moles of iron uh, reacting with three moles of oxygen gas, we can get two moles of iron two oxide, or sorry, iron three oxide. And if we were to get the molar masses of these using the periodic table, um, we can say we have 223 grams of iron reacting with 96 grams of oxygen, giving me 319.4 grams of um, iron 3 oxide. Uh, and if you add these guys up on this side, the mass of this, it will equal the mass of the products. So the mass of the reactants will equal the mass of the products. Okay, so understanding all these relationships, we're going to take this one, the one, the molar relationship, uh, the one that we're going to actually use to actually expand on that and get some more information about the chemical reactions. Okay, so let's use this for example. Um, C3H8 plus uh, oxygen gas yields carbon dioxide and water, and this is a combustion reaction, and it's balanced for us. And so we know that looking at the coefficients, 1, 5, 3, and 2, we can say, all right, if I have one mole of, of uh, butane, which is C3H8, um, I need five moles of oxygen gas to fully react with that. And then I'm going to get produce three moles of carbon dioxide and two moles of water. If this were all um, in, meaning if we started with one mole and five moles. But let's say we didn't start with one mole and five moles. Let's say instead of five moles, we started with three moles. Because we're not going to always have these relationships. Let's say instead we started with three moles. How many moles of C3H8 am I going to need to react with that? Well. I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm just going to do a molar relationship and say 3 moles, which is a ratio, moles of O2. And I'm going to do what we call a mole ratio. So I'm going to run across these out. So I look at my reaction. I say for every 5 moles of O2, I require 1 mole of C3H8 to react with that. So 3 divided by 5 is going to give me 0.6. So I actually need C3H8. I, if I had 3 moles of O2 to start with, I'm actually going to need only 0.6 moles of C3H8. Okay, so how many, if I had 3 moles of O2, how many moles of water am I going to be able, be able to produce? Well, I'm going to do kind of the same thing. Um, three mole, I'm going to start with my given of 3 moles of O2. I'm just going to do a mole, a mole ratio. So uh, I have, for my reaction, I have 5 moles of O2, and I can produce 2 moles of H2O. So 3 times 2 divided by 5 will give me 1.2 moles of H2O. So I can use that molar relationship to really figure out everything on my, on my um, chemical reaction, to bear compare all um, different molecules and elements that you have. So in this, to, to sum this up, I have five, 3 moles of oxygen gas. I need, um, sorry, I can produce 1.2 moles of water. Okay, great. But I mean, how often are you going to be able to use the word moles? Not very often. You're probably going to typically use mass, and mass is in forms of grams. So we actually have to go a little bit further. Let's take it one step further. Let's say I have 7 moles of C3H8 here, and I want to know how much water am I going to produce? What mass of water am I going to be able to produce? Okay, well the only way I can compare C3H8 and H2O is through the molar relationship. It's the only information I have. So I'm going to start out with my what's given, which is 7 moles of C3H8. And I'm going to do a molar relationship and do the mole ratio. So if I have um, one mole in my, re in my reaction, I look and I have one mole of C3, oops, H8, and I put it in the bottom so these can cross out. And I uh, require, it produces two moles 
of water. Oops. Okay, but I'm not looking for moles, I'm looking for grams. So I'm gonna go a step further. I know that one mole of water is 18 grams from looking at my periodic table. And I can cross these out because one's on top, one's on bottom. And the question asks me for grams of uh, water. My, I end in grams of water, so I can stop here. So I can multiply whatever's on top and divide whatever's on bottom. So 7 times 2 times 18 divided by 1 divided by 1 is going to give me, let's look, 252 grams of water. So if I started out with 7 moles of C3H8, I actually produce 252 grams of water. Um, <clears throat> to actually go a little bit further, because again, we don't usually measure in moles, uh, we measure in grams, we're going to do a mass-to-mass -mass relationship and extend this just a bit further. Okay, so instead of having, I measured out 7 moles, because we don't measure on moles, we measure out in grams, I'm given 27.2 grams of C3H8. How much oxygen gas am I going to need to react with that fully? Well, the only comparison I can have with these, the only relationship I know is molar relationships. So I have to change this to moles and then figure out the grams. So let's go from there. We start out with 27.2 grams of C3H8. Okay. So in uh, one mole of C3H8, oops, it, it gets 44 grams of C3H8. And that I got from a periodic table. Okay, these cross out. So now I'm in moles of C3H8. So great, I know that one mole of C3H8, looking at my reaction, I require five moles of oxygen gas. And these guys can cross out because they're on top and bottom. But my question asks for grams of oxygen gas. Right now I'm in moles of oxygen gas. So I'm gonna continue and say I know that one mole of oxygen gas is uh, 32 grams looking at my periodic table. So if I were to multiply whatever's on top and divide whatever's on the bottom, I get 27.2 times 1 times 5 times 32 divided by 44 divided by 1 divided by 1, which ends up giving me 98.9 grams of O2. This reaction, I mean not reaction, this uh, process and even though it's the longest one and now it can get the most complicated, is actually one that you're going to be using much more often, going from mass to mass. And don't forget, when you're going from mass to mass, you have to go through moles, because looking at our relationships, these are the only pieces of information that we have when comparing um, different things within a periodic table. It's our molar relationships. We have to go through moles to get there. So this is the basics of stoichiometry. And by two. I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had... No, that's not right. Three coplanar points. So, have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> <laughs> should be... Less than. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? Alright, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be bleh, starting over. So, as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs>